It's a, a people, it's a community, it's a life, it's a heart, it's a spirit. Parents of gay children say, I want my son, my gay son, to have the same opportunity to come to me and say, hey dad, I'm getting married, as my non-gay son or my non-gay daughter. What the heck would you want a picture of a tattoo of a thousand dollars on your penis for? Just... You might just need to satisfy yourself sexually alone at that point. Do I regret it? Not one bit. Did I think that I would actually take it to the next step and, and do it again? Uh, uh, you know. <laughs> and what goes into their life, how they handle it, their 12 houses, and each one of those houses has a particular function. Look into yourself, think about it, and just be whoever it is that speaks to you. Hello and welcome to Talking About. I am very happy to have a very special guest, Dr. Frank Spinelli, author of... Well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a long title. The Advocate's Guide to Gay Men's Health and Wellness. Okay, and um, the book in and of itself, I mean, there's, there's a wealth of information in the book. Um, Thank you. One of the things that, that you did write about it in here, which, which is what I sort of want to focus on in this segment, is um, just kind of getting to know your doctor. Right. Well, I think that was an important choice, and that's the, almost in the beginning of the book. Uh, when I first came out of training about 12 years ago, I was practicing in Chelsea, which is primarily a gay population, and I found myself immersed in a community that I really wasn't taught about formally in medical school and in training. So it made me really want to understand what kind of questions I should ask my patients, what kind of questions my patients should be asking from me. And I think it's that relationship that you have your, with your doctor that's very intimate that you need to get down to the crux of the information. So how else can you do that when you break through that barrier of being closeted with your doctor? So finding a gay doctor or someone that's gay friendly so that you can have that open dialogue about what's going on in your life. And uh, specifically, what are some of the things that were lacking that, that, that should be asked on both sides? Well, uh, you know, I think when most people think about gay culture, they think immediately about sex. And I remember the first thing I heard when you hear about anti-gay you know, comments is whatever goes on in your bedroom is your business and I don't want to know about that. And I used to get very upset about that. But in actuality, it is about what goes on in our bedroom as well as what goes on in our lifestyle. So then how do you bring men in and address that in an open way that's not embarrassing, that's not judgmental, and you know, to be frank, but that's what I say all the time. It's like you just want to have this open conversation with patients about their lifestyle, whether they're in partners or they're single, if they're having sex outside their relationship, three ways, monogamy, there are all different variations in the way gay men live, and that affects their health. And then I found that there was a predominance of STDs. The STD rates, especially syphilis, has gone up for the seventh consecutive year. HIV has become a huge problem for the gay community itself. So when you look at all of these issues as a whole, you can then address a patient individually, and then they can feel that they can talk to you about almost anything. So that's what I was trying to strive for in the book. Okay, so basically you said that the, the more that they tell you, the more you know, that th if they ask you the right questions, you can ask them the right questions. Yeah, when you think about it, I mean, an internist has that open policy. You're going to meet somebody for the, ter for the first time. They're probably going to get undressed in front of you. Uh, it, it's very, dis it's inhibiting. And you want to have a relationship with your doctor where you feel not so much as you, he's your best friend, but someone you can confide in and, and address these issues. And for the most part, the privilege is, is that I might grow old with my patients and learn a lot about them and see the way their lives evolve and who comes in and out of their relationship and who they marry or choose to partner up with and how that affects their lives. I mean, uh, one of the biggest uh, sections in the book was talking about psychological issues like depression, anxiety, fear of internalized homophobia. There are so many men that were so closeted. And I think particularly we addressed that as the over 40 group that I turned 40 the year I wrote the book. So it was a big turning point in a lot of people's lives because that's when they take stock of their lives and they think, all right, now that I'm 40, what do I need to know? I want to be healthy. And so addressing that for men, talking about preventative health care issues for 40 and beyond so that we can live happier and healthier as gay men and feel empowered by that. Mm. So if, the, if I was coming to you for the first time, which, what specifically should I be asking you? Well, I, in the book I talk about like five things you should ask your doctor. And certainly I think a full physical exam every year is very important. 
uh, whether or not you need blood tests. Some patients and some friends have said, you know, I went in, I got a battery of tests, I don't even know why. And talking to your doctor, do I need STD screening? Obviously, if you're in a monogamous relationship, you might not. If you're a single guy and you're sexually active, you might need that. You might need that more than someone else, especially like an HIV test or STD screenings, which we talk about. But also, at what age do I worry about colonoscopies and, and other cancer-related uh, issues that come up according to your age? And then what cancers are involved in a, in a gay man as opposed to a heterosexual man, specifically anal cancer? We don't really talk about that a lot. And then there were other issues that I don't think were caused by gay men. We talk about um, MRSA, methicillin-resistant staph aureus. Not a gay disease, but it is affecting the gay community. So addressing that with the public so that when men see um, infections on their skin, they're keyed into saying, I need to go talk to my doctor about this. So I wanted something that was more comprehensive, uh, that, you could be, that, could ha that could be accessible and you could take around with you, and that wasn't such a textbook. And then um, I tried to weave it in with my life, because I am a gay man, and how that affected me in learning this information. And there are some stories about uh, the practice itself and me coming out to my parents. So we will try to cover everything. Well, I mean, just in, in reading the book, yeah, I found it not only informative, but yeah, it was an interesting read. You know, serious issues are discussed, but with a light touch at times. And yeah, that, 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 keeps, that keeps the pages turning. Well, thanks. I mean, if it was too heavy handed, I think it would just turn into a textbook and then you'd put it down. And I, I, in some respects, I wanted you to be able to laugh a little bit of it. And there's a whole section on sex, and th that can be very, you know, funny and uncomfortable to talk about, but I was, I was getting very tired with men not coming to grips with how certain disease states and how certain sexually transmitted diseases occur. Mm. Um, if, if you're seeing a doctor, a new doctor for the first time, and you find that you're, you're not comfortable in the situation, I mean, do you, is, is it <laughs> do you is get it, out? Is, yeah. <laughs> how, how do you get it, or do you get out? Is well, it like is it like dating? You know, maybe <laughs> if I go out with him one more time, I'll like him a little bit more. Well, it, I don't know. If it's, <laughs> I wouldn't say dating because I'll get in a lot of trouble <laughs> with that. But I think it's important to interview doctors. Uh, you 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 should get a referral from someone that you know and trust that sees a doctor that they like. Most patients, unfortunately, go through their insurance list and say, "Okay, Dr. Spinelli lives near my house. I'm going to try him," which is fine. Uh, but in that initial encounter, that's an opportunity for you to see how this doctor talks to me. Is he making eye contact with me? Is he listening to me? Mm. And then in the same respects, what did he lay out as a plan for us? You know, that initial encounter should be something where I take a history from you. We talk about all, many different things. And then also the physical exam part of it. Then lay out the preventative health care plan, like what tests are we going to do? What's important for you? in this relationship because not everybody, it's not cookie cutter medicine. Everybody's just a little bit different. There mm. are guidelines, but you want to see how that doctor incorporates them with you. And then depending on if there's something wrong with you or not, how he hears you and how he's going to make a plan based on your feelings because you should be a very integral part in your care. Okay. Well, I mean, there's, there's a wealth of information to cover. Um, where can people find out more information about you and the book? Well, the, the book is in most bookstores now, Amazon and uh, Barnes and & Nobles and uh, other, other bookstores. Uh, right now, I'm in the middle of getting a website put up, so frankspinellimd.com is, is uh, in under construction. Okay. But you can definitely go to MySpace backslash frankspinellimd if you'd like to ask any questions. Okay, and there is a link to that on the www.talkingabout.info webpage. Um, the link is right, right next to your podcast okay. and right on our links page. So if you're looking for more information, www.talkingabout.info. We're just about out of time for this segment. I do want to thank you very much oh, for you. sitting down with me. And hopefully you'll come back for another segment, <laughs> either okay. with me or JC. Okay. Okay, thank you very much, and I will see you next time.